Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going over actually some pretty cool answers regarding a lot of the questions we have in Kenobi, and they're actually answered by Hayden Christensen. So let's get to it. Now, of course, while we have a lot of questions with Kenobi, you know, Hayden can't answer literally every fan theory or question that we may have. But I think some of the, and mind you, I haven't read this, so I, I saw that there were a few questions here and I'm like, this seems pretty interesting. So let's go ahead, read it for the first time for both of us, and then, you know, candidly, I can talk about it. So the first question from The Hollywood Reporter is, Vader's introduction at the end of part two was perfect. What was going through his mind when he finally sensed Kenobi through the Force? So this was, of course, when Reva reveals that Anakin Skywalker is alive, that Darth Vader is alive, and Obi-Wan says, Anakin, you know, in suspense. And of course, Anakin Vader opens his eyes in the Bacta and we get that ominous music. Big fan of that scene. So here's what Hayden has to say. He says, there's just so much history to that relationship. There's obviously a great bond that was broken and I think that Vader is still very much affected by that. That first shot in the back to tank when you see Vader opening his eyes, the idea is that Obi-Wan is connecting with him and coming to his attention again. Okay, so I guess coming to his attention again. So I guess maybe there was a bit of time where Vader was like really hell bent on finding Kenobi. Let's say seven years out of those 10 years, he was like, okay, well maybe Kenobi's kind of dead and I got to put him on the back burner a little bit. I'm still going to search for him, but it's not going to be as easy as I thought. I'm not sure. How long is the vastly intricate makeup process? It's a good four to five hours. Okay. Is it always you in the suit or is there a double so you can get a rest from wearing the beast of a costume? Hayden says, I'm not the only one in the suit because of the height difference between myself and the character. There's some stuff that's just a little bit too challenging for us to try to film with me in the suit. So I do what I can and then I have to help. I have the help of a couple of the other great performers who do a lot of the work as well. So I saw in a um, post by one of the gentleman in the suit. All of the full body shots of Vader are not Hayden, uh, you know, because you have to have the height. And then all of the close up shots, or a lot of the close up shots, unless they're fighting, is a good chance that it is Hayden. Is the suit more comfortable than from episode three? You know what? It was a little bit more comfortable. I think they make improvements each time they make one. In the series, 10 years have passed since Revenge. So what is your process for this iteration of the character? Do you still consider some vestiges from Anakin in him at this time? Ooh, it's a great question. Uh, or do you want what that you wanted to make sure shine through? So of course, this is something I've always wondered and kind of theorized is that, you know, this is 10 years after three and 10 years before four. So, you know, let's say we've got like two percent of Anakin in episode four well we're gonna have double that amount probably like four percent at this point in time so yeah we'll see what's going on so he says yes I always see Anakin as a through line and an undercurrent to this character Vader is trying his best to kill off that side of him but there always has to be a little bit of Anakin in there and that presents itself and that's a part of the fun I'm always thinking about the Anakin aspect of this character beautiful and I think that's something that George always really drove home is that Anakin never was killed fully by Vader you know you see a lot of like video titles like you know when Vader fully killed and it's like that no he never did because if he did then you know uh, Re Return of the Jedi would have never happened so it was that little sliver of Anakin that was able to uh, ignite from Luke sacrificing himself in the name of love. That encounter at Mapuzo in part three was for most fans, you can't please everybody, but for most spectacular. I thought your performance shown through the suit spectacularly. Actors have told me in heavy makeup and or a cumbersome costume, they have to give so much more to the performance. What was your process for the crucial scene? You know, this is the first time we've seen Vader sort of chronologically this close to the Anakin Skywalker character. So there are some indications of Anakin in there, but for the most part, we're, we're trying to remain true to what we know and love about this character and make sure we honor the way he moves and sounds to stay true to that continuity. And absolutely, they really have to make sure that they move just like Dave Prowse did. Because of course, and I say this, you know, nobody comes close to how well Dave Prowse moved and just that overall intimidating presence that he had, mainly because he was a powerlifter and bodybuilder, and he was just a jacked, giant man. So, you know, when you saw Vader in the suit, like, you could see his arms were filling out the suit, his legs were filling out the suit, and that's something that I think Lucasfilm has to be very cognizant of when they're hiring new people to fill the suit. Otherwise, it just looks funny. It looks like it's baggy or something. So... You need to have those broad shoulders for Vader 
Like in Rogue One, the guy didn't, I, I, it just, something looked different about it. I don't know, maybe it was because the helmet was, you know, outside of the cape or inside of the, it just, there are certain things that they have to make sure they get right in order for it to look just like Dave Prowse, because Dave Prowse is Vader. So, may he rest in peace. So now he's asking about the Mapuzo fight. So, well, I think that came as a shock to Vader to see how disconnected from the Force Obi-Wan is at this point. I think Vader wants Obi-Wan to be able to put up more of a fight. I don't want to say too much about what's to come. Interesting. So, I guess in the directing and the writing, it was written that Vader is extremely shocked that Obi-Wan is so weak and so disconnected from the Force, whereas, you know, Vader's been training this whole time and pretty much relearning how to use his hands and feet, you know? It, now that he's all machine and really harnessing down on the dark side of the force which is something that he didn't really have time to do in revenge of the sith all that much now this is nice he's talking about how he feels about you know the fans showing him love finally he says i've gotten so many nice messages from people from friends showing their support and it's just it's been a great honor for me to get to come back to this character and to feel the support from the fans it is hugely meaningful for me and ultimately they're the reason why we get to come back and do all of this so yeah, I value their feelings a lot. If you don't mind sharing, did Mr. Lucas send a note or has he said anything about your return? Laughs, no. Haven't heard from Mr. Lucas yet. Hope he's enjoying the show. What? Dude, I would have thought he would have like reached out to Hayden or, you know, um, vice versa or, uh, you know, there would have been some sort of a talk there or connection or something. But I mean, you know, if, if he's saying it as it is and, you know, not on like a gag order by Disney or something like, that's kind of sad, man. I, I wonder what George really thinks about it. He's, he's not even reaching out. I, I don't know, like, was he even on set? I, I would have imagined he would have been on set, you know, but weird. Um, I'm curious if you look back at the work in the prequels to prepare for Obi-Wan Kenobi, and is there a moment that you are particularly proud of? I certainly went back and watched all the films again and studied Anakin as much as I could. There's just a lot going on with the character. He's always sort of processing, trying to figure out what's going on around him. I don't know that I have a scene that I was most proud of, but there's a scene where Anakin goes back to Tatooine in episode two and speaks to Watto. The script had the dialogue written in English and then in parentheses it said, in Watanese. It wasn't until the day before we started filming that I went to George and I was like, what should Watanese sound like? And he was like, well, you know, so long as it doesn't sound like English or any other language that might sound familiar, you can just make it up. <laughs> so I was rushing the night before trying to figure out how to make up Watanese. And every time I see that scene, I get a bit of a kick out of it. That's funny, dude. I love how laid back George is. He's like, yeah, just make it up. I know some actors do not like to watch themselves on screen. They've told me it's a matter of being too critical, seeing an instance they wish they could change. Since you got a second bite at the apple with this character, did you plan differently? I wouldn't say a different plan, but we are further informing this character and how we go about doing that. I think it's interesting to approach this character after all this time, and at this point in my life, I'm definitely bringing something different to the table. And that's true, you know, it's, it's been 17 years since um, Revenge of the Sith, and, you know, but all, like, probably 20... He, he probably filmed Attack of the Clones in 2000, um, maybe even 2001 if they're cutting it that close, but I would say it's been like 22 years for him, you know, and if they filmed, so like 20 years. So he's had a lot of time to process and think and grow as an actor, and frankly, I liked his acting in the prequel trilogy. I know a lot of, a lot of uh, film critics and critic pros, film pros there have problems with it. For me, it was fine, it was great, and it did the job of Anakin Skywalker turning into Darth Vader, and I thought it was phenomenal. So uh, I guess at this point he's had time to really, but we haven't seen him talk yet. So did he just kind of hint that we're going to be getting Anakin Clone Wars flashbacks? That he's going to have to actually be acting? Because he's not acting if he's inside the suit, like, you know, with his face or voice or anything. So, I mean, <laughs> did he just slip one there? Safe to assume if Disney came to you with an Anakin prequel or Darth Vader limited series, you're down. Absolutely, to get to do the other, of course. And finally, a fun one, has Anakin softened at all about loathing sand? I assume you're aware of how much fans have had with that. You know, it's funny. I think it's funny that people have taken such an interest in that line. Some of the dialogue is different from what you're maybe expecting, but I never had any issues with that line. I understood Anakin's feelings towards sand, but maybe it was a bit of an odd time to bring it up as he's flirting with this girl who he has so much affection for, but you know, he's Anakin. Yeah, obviously I've made videos about the sand thing and I think it's kind of, I understand people laugh at it and it's a thing now, it's a meme, but you know, if you really put yourself in Anakin's shoes, sand is association with, uh, 
torture, with uh, slavery, with oppression, um, and you know, Watto and death, and and just not a good time. So I can definitely see why he he would have said that. I mean, at the time when I remember when I saw it in theaters when I was 12, it wasn't a thing. Like it just. It, it made sense to me. It made sense to a lot of people, but you know, as time goes on and, and you know, the internet became a thing and memes became, oh my God, I'm like old dude, the internet became a thing. Memes became a thing and uh, you know, it's, um, it's a thing now. So anyways, I think the most interesting thing from this is that he hasn't heard from George Lucas. Um, it's unfortunate, you know, I wish George was more hands-on, but also he probably just doesn't want to be, you know? Fair enough, I guess. Um, the second most important thing I think I could take from this or at least the most important thing for the show, the show's sake, is that Vader wants Obi-Wan to be able to put up more of a fight. And that's something that a lot of you guys were saying and we were speculating on during the watch party. It's that Vader does want to prove himself, you know? He does want Obi-Wan to be as powerful as he was or more powerful in Reven as he was in Revenge of the Sith so that Vader can like prove himself because he's probably extremely mentally battered with just how the fact that he lost to Obi-Wan. And I believe that Anakin could have absolutely beaten him if it was, you know, in like an arena or, you know, on flat ground or something. And there wasn't th the danger of molten lava, you know, chilling to burn him up. Now, even with that, there still is the chance that Anakin would have been brash and just arrogant and Obi-Wan would have chopped him up. So lava or no lava, you know, Anakin really needed to check himself and he needed to make sure that he wasn't so just quick to the punch and trying to beat Obi-Wan at his own move that Obi-Wan beat Darth Maul in, you know, and that was something that Anakin was always obsessing over how Obi-Wan beat Darth Maul by jumping over him. And uh, this is, you can get a call back to this in the comics, in the canon comics, which is pretty cool. So anyways, that was an interesting interview, nice little short one. I hope you guys enjoyed this little review, my little review. And of course, um, thanks to The Hollywood Reporter for putting this interview together. I hope he maybe discusses something about the, the fire, the flames, and Vader not going after him. I mean, I, I still at that point, I, I think the writing for that was unfortunate, but you know, I'm, st I'm hoping that we'll get an answer, but we'll see. Anyways, I'll see you guys for the watch party in about four hours and a half. So catch you guys later. May the force be with you and have a great next few hours.